How do there, one and all, welcome back to the channel. Ruckus here with another mixed bag to get through today. We've got four games in a variety of vehicles as none of the tanks I'm grinding at the moment are at a sufficient level for their own episode. I haven't been playing Blitz all that much. I've decided to extend my Blitz break over the Christmas period into January, trying to get my life back in order or some semblance of order anyway. It's been a good break, really enjoying it, but I am still working on some new content in the background, so hopefully that'll come soon. We're starting down here at tier three with the Kenny Otsu, which is no longer for sale these days because Kenny is broken, <laughs> definitely broken. You might remember it was released uh, into the premium shop. It's a tier three premium and then quickly withdrawn when Wargaming realized they had made an error. What error is that? Well, it is in the reload on this four clip auto loading gun. It was supposed to be released with a nine second reload between clips, but it actually has a three second reload. Putting Kenny's DPM at uh, 40 alpha per shot, around 1900. And to get a sense of just how OP that is at tier three, the IS-7 has a DPM of 2200 so Kenny is <laughs> right up there <laughs> it is a ridiculous machine uh, and it's hard to see how the company could have made such a large error uh, in its release surely someone has looked over the stats and played the vehicle once or twice before it was released to the public I don't think it's possible for the company to make that kind of error I think it was done on purpose you know what I'm like with these things I am skeptic Wargaming is a company and it is out to make money and I think what they've done here with Kenny is release it, allow just enough people to buy a broken vehicle and then withdraw it quickly. You can't release too many, you can't let too many people buy them otherwise you break low tier matches with these OP machines. You don't want to, uh, it's a bit of a fine balancing act, you don't want to scare away all the new players who are just getting trolled by these uh, little Japanese light tanks. So you withdraw it, just enough people have got it just enough people are talking about it. There's a bit of mystique around the vehicle. People who didn't get it were like, ah, oh, no, I should have bought that premium. Now it's no longer for sale. And the next time a premium tank goes on sale, they might be sitting on the fence going, oh, I don't know whether I should buy this one or not. I've got enough premium vehicles. But thinking back to Kenny, they might release it broken and uh, it might be my only chance to grab it. And so those kind of people would be more likely to buy the next premium tank. I think that's what they've done with this. Um, it's pretty underhanded. And maybe it's not what they've done, but that's that's my opinion on what this is because it's too big an error to have been made and get past testing, I think. But anyway, this is Kenny, and we are on Fail Creek for this match. It is a tier four game, and quite a tier four game for that matter. There's only five tier threes in the entire game. We've got the slight upper hand with one extra tier four. But this is the kind of matchmaking you do need on Kenny. Uh, because it is just too easy at tier 3. <laughs> you really don't get to see the full potential of the machine unless you've got targets to shoot at that have a uh, bigger health pool as some of these tier 4s I'm facing off against do. Uh, Japanese, whatever that thing is over there, A20 and a T28 around the back there. There was a Valentine, the tier 3 tank destroyer up the back that I was worried about but he's moved off and I am just sitting here, hold down uh, Trying to hold off these guys as they come around the corner. I've got a headset behind me, which is a good ally to have in this situation. But I uh, got a bit too aggressive there, and the Kei Keihu, I'm not going to be able to pronounce Japanese names at all. I apologize, Japan. The Kihu, Kiho, whatever, uh, was able to get an easy shot there into my front. Kenny does not have any armor to speak of. I think the turret front is the best at 30 mil. The whole front is only 16 mil. And it's really the only significant weakness of the machine. It is maneuverable. It has good gun depression. Uh, it's got good powder weight. It's not a super fast machine, but it does not feel slow by any stretch of the imagination. The accuracy is pretty poor at 0.4 meters per 100 meters, but the aim time is incredibly fast. Uh, 1.6 second aim time, which is important because you are flogging these shots out <laughs> at an incredible rate. I think the firing time between shots is... Uh oh Keho on the way. Come on, he's got a shot in. Gotta get back. And look at the reload on this clip. Boom. <laughs> it's so fast, it's ridiculous. And of course, 
reloading the full clip uh, after every shot. If I've got anything left in the chamber, do a reload. This is auto loading 101. Always go into engagement with full clip. Uh, and that's easy to do when your reload is only three seconds. But yeah, between shots, it's only 0 0.6 seconds, I think, between shots in a clip. It just flogs these shots out at an incredible rate. So that is the game just about done. I didn't expect to survive this one. Things were happening very quickly in that uh, little hold down position there, but just enough allies around me to soak up the damage. Poor old Matilda here has come very late to the party and is getting a few shots left in this Hetzer. And there is the game. Kenny coming out the top gun in a very tier 4 battle. You little beast. Mastery, Top Gun, and an Orlick medal. Kenny coming away with the Rambo medal, which I've just made up for doing more damage than the rest of his team combined. <laughs> what a beast of a machine. 56 shots fired, 42 penetrating, 1500 damage. 44,000 credits, also very good for tier three, and 1450 XP. Moving up to tier seven for the second game. Myself and Pimp Daddy XR. I'm in the E25. It's been a while since I've played this thing and shown it on the channel. Probably one of my favorite tank destroyers in the entire game still. Uh, I didn't get much of a run in it at the end of last year due to the ping issues we're having. You really do need to have a good connection um, because it is a finicky little machine. The controls have to be just right if you're going to position this thing correctly and uh, use that fast firing gun and it's quick aim time. The Panther M10 that pimps in is one of the few vehicles that you can safely uh, platoon with with the E25 and still get the preferential matchmaker it gets. So these two things combined will see no worse than tier 8 when you platoon together. First target up, missed an absolute sitter there on the side of the T25 turret. Not a good start, give away my position as well. Pimp has gone wide, he's got a few targets out there, he's face up against, and our E2 here is battling a bit. Stay hold down, mate. Big Soviet guns. Coming here, trying to intercept the KV-1S before he can get there into the flanking position where Pimp is. And he's just fired, I think, in the E2. He rushes that shot, glancing over my roof, and an engine fire has him on very low hit points. He's about to get lucky though, there's a shot off the engine deck. So where's the last shot? Another one off the engine deck, come on. Ugh, it's going to take four shots to kill this guy. But now I'm in behind the reds, and they are too slow to recognize the threat. Chinu here has come around and gets one shot into me before I take him down. Oh God, SU-152. Punch the boost, get out! <laughs> Stay low, get out, Jesus. No one get hit by that. Pimp's done right there. Just an issue 100 left. I'm sure he's got that guy, yep. And just like that, the game is done. Look out, IS as well. Thankfully going after my ally. Let's take down, yep, issue 152, he's looking the other way. So here is a kill like a ninja. Yes, thank you. That's just the place left now. A rapid game. Side of the turret, firing on the move. Can get away with that quite a bit with the E25 because the reload is so fast. It doesn't really matter if you miss a shot. Do a lot of firing in third person view with this machine. And I'm pretty sure Pimp has a shot here, but he is a gentleman and allows me to get the Radleys for that one. Thank you, mate. That was a fast game. Second class, Top Gun, Radley, Sniper, and the BIA. 2.3k damage, 2 for Pimp, 20 shots fired. 61,000 credits and 8,000 XP on a times 5 weekend. That's probably the fastest 8,000 XP I've ever made, I think. <laughs> Tier 9 battle on Middleburg for the third game. I'm in the Soviet heavy tank IS-8 and Josh is in the SDI, also a Tier 9 Soviet heavy tank. And this game is notable for a number of reasons, but the biggest is our interaction with that Leopard PTA. 
This is uh, pretty funny. <laughs> he wants to go into town, but me and Josh are having none of it. We just played a game here on Middleburg in our heavy tanks where we went to town. The Reds won the hill and our team crumbled around us, so to hell with it. We're going into the high ground, even though these aren't the best machines for it. And the Leopard is not happy. He wants to go to town. He's worried about the sniper positions on the far side, of which there definitely are some, but the far side of this hill is no more a powerful position than the sniper positions on this side of the map. Although they do have one extra position, which is notable for this game, and that is on the high ground right under the two symbol on the map, the Reds two symbol. Sometimes you get a tank sitting up the back there who can fire down against um, guys in the valley here and in that windmill to the left of me right now, wherever the hell that is, that building. So the Leopard's worried about that. He wants to go to town, avoid those sniper positions, but we're not going to do that this match. And it's a good thing we've come up here because the Reds are yolowing their tier 9s. And uh, this T-54 has made a grave error. He's bugging out. To my right, now M103, getting some good shots into these valuable targets. The only sniper I can see at this stage is the Comet up the back, and that's not a big threat. It's worth poking out to uh, whittle down the health of this Tier 9 American Heavy Tank. We've come out okay, trading a Tier 9 and a Tier 7 for two Tier 7s. As we keep the pressure onto this poor T20, with engine fire, it's a good result. Will he burn to death? Nope, Josh gets him. Now watch our Leopard, he's gone all the way around, and now he's getting chased by the T54. And who's he spotted up in that sniper position? Well, there's a VK4502A, with adrenaline on. And, wait for it. <laughs> the sniper he was worried about at the start of the match, Takes him out in the end anyway, even though he went to town. Oh, good play, Leopard. Jeez. And he is not happy about it. Calling us idiots for him getting hit by the sniper that he was worried about at the start. <laughs> oh, you cannot make this shit up. Uh, got myself in a bit of crossfire here against that VK in the IS-8 behind me, but it's okay. The team's doing well. We've got an extra tank and they've lost some valuable targets. Uh, spell check there. Trolling me. Come on. T54. Side of this guy. That's a good shot. And we can lose that Indian PZ though. Right, that's the last shot the IS8 will fire. Cameo appearance there by Hubert Jass. He got huge ass gaming and I was too busy laughing at the leopard here to play seriously. Look at this position I've got myself in. <laughs> Didn't have the gun elevation to fire back at that T54, but there we go. Got him. Luckily. And I am determined to troll this leopard. VK has come over and he's plenty of shots in me, but come on. Hold there, VK. Oh, Autocorrect. There we go. <laughs> and I thought he was going to come over and try and finish me off, but he gets cold feet. Probably seeing Josh there on the other side of the hill. Let's be cautiously now. Josh is moving in, and he's coming around. Shot into his flank. Why is he targeting the tiger? That's okay. Yes! Good result. <laughs> Let's see how that leopard did. Mastering the sniper for that game. 5k damage for myself, 2 for Josh. 200 damage from our pro ally in the Leopard PTA. Well played, mate. 12 shots fired, 12 penetrations. Adds up quickly in this machine. 50,000 credits and 8.8 thousand XP for a times 2 game. That is a big result. Last but not least, we come all the way up to tier 10. The first tier 10 vehicle I purchased in Blitz. This is the Soviet medium tank T-62A. And like the teammate Black Prince, who hasn't been on the channel for a while, is in the newer tier 10 Soviet medium tank, the Object 140. And we are on the new map, Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf obviously not getting the uh, castle area that the PC version of this map, being a direct PC port or thereabouts, got. Um, simply because 
there just aren't enough players in a blitz battle to spread your teammates out that far. It would be very frustrating. As much as I would have liked to have seen the castle be an active part of the map, the high ground up there to the right, it would be a very frustrating map to play on if for every game you lost half your teammates to the high ground whilst you battled to defend the cap point <laughs> or the rest of the reds down the bottom. Uh, it would lead to a lot of draws, I think, and a lot of frustration. Now, there's a lot of reds in this battle in the rail yard, and I call negative to Black Prince. I say, I'm getting out, I'm not doing them, I'm not going to support you. And it was the right move, though. We are going to lose Black Prince. He can't quite get out in time. He's getting rushed there by a few powerful tier 10s. Pause to take out the E75. I'm going to stick with this E100, who looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, Black Prince is getting swamped. And down he goes. This is the first game I'd played in the T62 for a while, so derp there. Driving up onto that pile of dirt, raising the gun far above the Tiger 2 there, missing a shot. Terrible gun depression on the T62A. E100 gets him and pivots back to engage the flankers. I'm worried about this E100 here, but a quick look at him shows that he is face hugging a train, which means he's going AFK at some point. So, just a couple quick looks at him, make sure he's not moving up. Turn back now to face the real threats, help out uh, our teammates. We're a tank down, and we'll probably take down this Indian. Excellent rate of fire on these Soviet tier 10 medium tanks. The Indian slips away on very low hit points. We'll swap the fire now to this tier 10 British heavy tank, the FV215B. Looking for that lower plate. Getting some easy shots in. Here's a rush shot on the move. Goes into the ground. And I leave him for the allies as I turn now to engage this flanking E50 who pumps a heat round into my side. Repair that to track damage. And it's time to face hug this guy. Use the good turret armor of the T62. Get right in the close. Bounce a few shots. One more should do it, but I get a low roll. It's going to take one more shot. And why he's not firing, he wants my hold. Couldn't pull back far enough. What's this? E100 in trouble. Ninja that kill on the object 140. And turn my attention back to the E100 and watch this. Check this guy's turret out. What the hell was that? <laughs> The full 180, I don't know what is going on with this guy. Is that a glitch that happens when you log back into a game after you dropped out? Or is this guy a bot? Or what the hell is going on with him? Well, he's alive now. Got to get in close, get away from that 152mm gun. And have to be careful to touch him as well because that thing weighs a lot. And uh, you don't want to ram the E100 in any medium tank. Shots in the side of the turret. He does plant a HE round into my front, but there he goes. That's the game done. Neil Patrick Deleuze, what is going on with your account, man? And that is the round done. 5k damage in the T62A. And the episode done as well. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll uh, catch you soon on the next one. Peace.